Okay, I'd like to formally welcome Mr. John Henry Harder to Central Elementary School. Thanks, Mr. Um, thank you for helping kids participate in their student election on Friday. Absolutely. Um, it's important that we practice active citizenship and when the kids have an option to have their voice heard, that they take advantage of that. And um, you're helping them understand the importance of that. So thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks to all of you too. So I guess the format is I'm just going to introduce myself. Uh, my name is John Henry Harder and I'm running for school board trustee. I'm really happy uh, that Mr. Lister invited me here and that you are all here to invite to have me into your classroom as well. Two of my kids went to Central and my youngest who's now in grade 10 at CSS had Miss Bartell and Mr. Lister as a teacher. She had Miss Bartell in grade five and grade six, and then uh, Mr. Lister was her teacher for part of the grade six year. So it feels really cool to, to come back and talk to you all here at Central. So one of the things Mr. Lister asked me to do, and I know you've had lots of other candidates here as well, so they probably already explained the role of a school trustee. Some of the key things that we do as trustees are, one of the key things is to make policy, which affects you here in the school and affects the whole school district. The other thing we do is hire a superintendent. But I think that the most important role of a school trustee is to be the, the public community voice for public education and to make sure to the best of our ability that we have a really well-funded public education system. So if you need extra help, there's a learning assistance teacher that's there to help you. That they, if, if some of you kids may or may not have educational assistance, or you may need one, but you don't get enough time for that. And really that's about funding. And funding, we get our money from the province. And if it's not enough, I think it's really important for school trustees to speak up, to be the voice for public education. Because I know you're gonna ask me all sorts of questions and you have concerns about all sorts of things at your school. And it's difficult for you to have a voice um, particularly talking to the province, to your MLAs, to talk about funding. So really, the trustee is supposed to be that voice for you and for your parents as well, and for teachers and staff, and voice their concerns with them and for them in, in a lot of cases. Thank you. Thank you for explaining the role of the school trustee. So, Mr. Harder, um, we have to, there are 13 candidates for a school board trustee, so the students have to somehow narrow down their choice, and we're working on doing that in, um, in a responsible way. Sure. And so we need to differentiate between candidates. So what would you bring to the role of school trustee? Well, I think just building on what I said earlier, one of the things that I, I bring to the role of trustee is to be a strong voice for public education to listen to the community and the community's interests and advocate for the schools, for public education. So that's one thing. Another thing that I bring is I wasn't a trustee. You know that they were three-year terms for school trustee um, and there's elections every three years. This time it's gonna be a four-year term. I do have experience. I was a school trustee from 2005 to 2011. So for two terms, six years. So if I were to get elected um, this time, I don't need to learn the ropes. I already know what being a school <coughs> trustee is, so I can hit the ground running as well. But uh, advocate for public education, uh, effective communication, and experience. And then also, and I think this is important, I do have, I have four kids. Um, three of them graduated from Chilliwack Senior Secondary already, but my youngest is in grade 10. And I think it's good that uh, school trustees have kids in the system so they know what's going on and it's not to say that people can't be grandparents as well i'm actually also a grandparent but to have experience with the public school system and you know your kids come home and they say this is going on and i couldn't go to the library today because the library i don't know if, if you would know that the library is five percent or not but you'd say oh i can only go to the library on wednesdays at noon to turn in my books it's good to know that and it's good I have the experience and also my oldest kids went to school when the librarian was 100%. So I understand um, what the cuts to education have meant for you all and how it impacts you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Howard, if you wouldn't mind fielding some questions. Absolutely. They've been tough and, and to, the, to the point, so I'm, <laughs> you, I'm, sure you can, I'm sure you can deal with it. So 
Um, my five question people, um, we picked you earlier, you know who you are. So um, when Mr. Harder just calls on you, could you um, please introduce yourself with your first name? And then if we need to repeat the question, then we'll do so. so. I'll start with, with you. Okay. Yeah, sure. My name's Logan, and if I elect you, will you try to get an electronic for every student? Oh, wow, Logan, that's a really good question. <laughs> I think that could be really good. I don't want to promise you that if I get elected, I will get you. Like, I can't say, if you elect me, everybody will have an electronic device. But I will definitely look into it, and I think it's a good idea. I know, and I have to ask you this, or, or maybe Mr. Lister, some of the other kids. When my daughter went here, um, they had basically a cart that had, I think it was little mini laptops. And so every kid didn't have one, but if Mr. Lister, if you guys wanted to use them one day, you bring the card in and everyone would have mini laptops. To be honest, so that was years ago. So I'm not even sure if you're still doing that or not. So we have a similar system. We have um, uh, 30, 40, 42 full-size laptops. We right. have for 250 kids. So uh, yeah. that's the ratio. Yeah. yeah. So Logan, I don't know because of what I would do is advocate for more funding and I think what I could legitimately promise about trying to do is to uh, make that ratio smaller. So rather than just have the 42 for 250 kids, have 100 and then build towards every every kid having one. I think that would be more reasonable because I don't disagree with you, but I, I know that I'm not going to do that. The elections, November 15th, if I get elected, you start in December. So in January, I know everyone's not going to have a laptop, but I could work on it over years. Thank you. Okay, here's my next question. Beside Logan. Um, I'm Kaja, and I was wondering if I let you, could you bring in a music and drama program? Uh, that's a really good question. I, you know what? You're going to get really bored of me because I'm going to say... <laughs> that I need to advocate for funding. But yes, I think that I think that every school, elementary, middle, and high school needs arts education. They need drama, mm -hmm. film, television, and just the fine arts as well, for sure. And it, <coughs> excuse me, it has to be a priority. And I know that this isn't the exciting part of uh, my campaign, but it's all about non-enrolling teachers. So you know how Mr. Lister he, he teaches your class, right? He has a classroom all day long. But those teachers like the counselors, uh, the librarian, the learning assistants, and even an arts teacher um, are often non-enrolling teachers. So you could, we could have an arts program where a teacher was hired to specifically to teach the arts. And so Wednesdays for an hour and a half, she or, or he would come here and teach you arts and then go to another class and teach arts. And I know they used to do that years ago. I think it's uh, that would be a good building block. Um, ideally, though, you'd have an art room that you could go to and the art teacher's there. Thank you, though. That's a great question. Okay, that's two. Now we're going to three. There we go. All right. Um, my name is Andy, and I like you. Would you add my code bit for Jimmy? Oh, wow. Good. Andy, right? Good question. Uh, Mr. Howard, when you finish your coffee, could you just repeat that question for the, for the camera? Sure. I'm sorry. I know that when you eat food, I was taught that you're supposed to share with everyone, but I think your parents would be really upset if I brought you all coffee and sent you home <laughs> all awesome. caffeinated up. But Mr. Listy wouldn't be too. <laughs> <laughs> I would be. So, so Andy's question was, if I were elected, would I get more equipment for the gym? And I think, you know, I hate to come here and promise everything and then not deliver, but that seems like a really simple request. So I want to say yes. I think that we could do that. I, I think that there's a problem with the school board right now in terms of how we do our budget. And the fact that, that you're asking me... Um, simply for more equipment. I think that should be a really simple solution and we should, we should say yes. We have to talk. I think what would be good is, um, if I were to get elected, is that I would go to schools and say, okay, what's going on? Um, what do you think the, the, the uh, highest need is? So, 
because we do have to make choices, right? Because I'm anticipating maybe a couple of the other questions might be about funding too. So what sort of choices do we make? Do we want to move towards having a uh, electronic device for every student? Do we want, and we shouldn't have to make these choices. I totally get it. We should have devices for kids. We should have fully equipped gym and we should have uh, art and drama programs. Unfortunately, the way it is right now, we make choices. So let's build towards that and then we'll get some more equipment for the gym. So it, like I said, I don't want to pretend that overnight magically Central's going to have everything that they ever wanted to have. I think they should, but I don't want to promise you that I'm magic um, and I can do it instantly. Thank you for your question. Uh, beside Andy, you had a question too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you were elected, would you provide free busing to teachers and students on field trips? Oh, on field trips. Yes, I think there's a fund for for teachers when they when they're going on a field trip when they need a bus, and I think that would need to be increased because it's really difficult to go on a field trip without uh, proper busing, for sure. And our last question. Um, if I left you, could you add at 1.30, and my name is Dayton, and if I left you, would you add at 1.30 an extra 10 minute recess? Oh, wow. Dayton, that's a really good question. I have to be honest with you, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if a school trustee has the power to say, and I know that's crazy, right? Because I, you know we're managing a hundred and twenty million dollar budget at the at the school board, but I actually don't think that the school trustee can say uh, Central has a afternoon <coughs> recess. I think we could talk about it and suggest it, but every. Uh, and you're probably not going to vote for me now, but I'm trying to be. <laughs> I'm trying to be honest with you, because <clears throat> what I could do is say yes. Not only am I going to give you an afternoon recess, but then I'm going to give you a break an hour later for milk and cookies. Um, but each school determines their schedule, so that the the principal and the vice principal sit down, often at a staff meeting with teachers, hopefully too, and they lay out how the schedule schedule is going to work. So it would, I think it would be wrong for me to come in and say, you know what, um, you, have to, you have to put this afternoon recess in. I could help you uh, talk to the, the teachers and principals like as a larger discussion and say, you know what, a lot of students think they need an extra break in the afternoon. What do you think about that? But the, it is the teachers, the staff people, the principal and the vice principal that are the experts in education and they know how to structure a school schedule honestly better than I do. So I think it would be just like I don't come into Mr. Lister's class and say, you know what, you're going to have reading here and then you're going to do mathematics because I know better than you do. So I could try um, and hopefully I didn't lose your vote because I can't promise more recess. But I totally get that people would like to have a break in the afternoon. Hey, Mr. Hammer, thank you for fielding those uh, tough questions. Um, so to help kids just leave your presentation with one solid idea so they can make their decision. If elected um, for the next four years, Mr. Harder, what is your passion? What will you champion for the next four years? Great question. Uh, my passion is a fully funded public education system that would honestly be able to address every question that you asked, maybe minus the recess because we need a fully funded public education system to create the best uh, citizens, informed citizens, critical thinkers that we possibly can. So the takeaway, I guess, what I would do is be a strong voice for public education to advocate on all the things that you feel that you need and want in your school. I can't promise that I'll get everything, but I can promise that I'll fight as hard as I can to do that because I think the kids deserve it and the teachers. Wonderful. Hey, that concludes our presentation, Mr. Hannah. Right. Thank you once again for thank you so much, Mr. During a busy, busy time. Oh, no worries. Series. I enjoy Appreciate coming it. back to Central always.
So, um, Division 10, could we please give Mr. Hatter a warm central thank you? And we'll just get you off camera now so we can all relax. Thank you so much, Chris.